Another effect that's very important to take account of with our surfaces in order to get realistic renderings is the Fresnel effect. Quite simply, the Fresnel effect is the fact that surfaces will appear different in their diffuse and specular properties depending on the angle from which we view them. For instance, we most commonly see this as an effect of the specular, though of course it is reciprocal in other parts. So if we just kill the diffuse of this mesh for a moment and turn its reflectivity up to 100%, then of course what we see is that it's equally reflective all over. It doesn't matter the angle that the surface or any part of the surface is with regards to whether it's facing us or facing away from us, the reflection is the same. We can create a Fresnel effect in a variety of ways when we wish to, such as taking something like a gradient here, setting its input to incidence, which is the angle of incidence by which we are viewing a surface or part of a surface. We can set a couple of keys here at the zero and one position on the gradient. Zero represents surfaces that are facing away from us by 90 degrees, so completely glancing angle and one represents surfaces that are facing directly towards us. And so we could use the zero here at alpha 100. We could take the one here to alpha zero. And then when we plug the alpha into reflection, you see that we're getting more reflection on the glancing angles and a weaker reflection on the facing angles. Of course, surfaces will be energy conserved. So I can take a scalar subtract here do 1 minus this value, which is of course the reflection value, and plug that to our diffuse setting. This will be more easily viewed if we give our fellow here some manner of colour. And so what we see that we get is more of the diffuse on the parts of the surface that are facing directly towards us. And as the surface begins to tilt away from our view, we're getting less diffuse but more reflection and the two are balancing here reciprocally. So we might ask you know should it always be this way round and indeed why? Well the answer has to do with the physics of light and how it works but basically what it boils down to is the fact that light rays that are coming from here and bouncing off a facing surface back towards our view or in this case our camera are more likely they are more probable to just return as diffuse reflection to pick up the diffuse colour. Whereas a ray that is coming from sunlight somewhere over here and which is glancing off the edge of something and thus coming towards our camera, that is more likely to become a reflection ray and pick up less of the diffuse. It's probably helpful to think of light just as photons, these tiny little particles and imagine it like throwing other particles, namely rocks, at a surface of water. If you throw your rocks straight down, splash into the water, then you get this big splash of all this diffuse water coming off of it. If you skim your rock at a glancing angle to the surface, then it's more likely to just bounce off it and reflect away. As a simple metaphor, it's largely the same sort of thing that is happening with light photons that causes the Fresnel effect to behave the way it does. Now, as I said, there are a couple of ways to create this effect, and this way that I've done it here with a gradient is just the most naive of them. If we take a look at this gradient just driving the colour, then it is quite a smooth, simple gradient, of course, just straight from face to glancing angle. Most materials do not behave like this. Rather, the gradient will be more weighted. So you'll get a good area of the facing angle that, of course, returns diffuse, whilst the specular and the reduced diffuse is confined much more to the very tight grazing angles, something like this. As you see, when we hook this back up, we start to get a very different effect that already starts to look more realistic something like some kind of plastic or similar kind of material. The thing about this gradient and its ramp as it transfers from facing to grazing angle is that it's controlled by the surface property, specifically the index of refraction. We commonly think, of course, as refraction as dealing with transparent items and how they bend light through themselves. But in truth, all surfaces have a degree of refraction. Just because they're not transparent doesn't mean that they're not 
bending light. It's just that only transparent surfaces will bend light travelling through them. Those that are not effectively change the behaviour of light that rebounds off of their surfaces. As such, even though we can use a simple gradient like this to design our own Fresnel effect, and if you're wanting to just design your own materials to get a certain look that's artistically pleasing, that's perfectly fine. But a better way to do it is to use the Fresnel node here, which allows you to actually input a specified index of refraction. If you want to know what this is for any given material, you can just go ahead and have a Google. We can see that there's a Wikipedia entry for list of refractive indices, various liquids, solids, other materials. And when we've got that, then of course we take the result here that will drive the reflection. And of course we get the inverse of it out of that node that we can then use to drive the diffuse. We see here this is a IOR of 1.5. That's about average for many plastics. Once we get onto metals, we get very high IOR values. They can be in the, you know, range of 10 to even 50. And what you see these high IOR values give us is they push much more reflection onto the front face as compared with just the glancing face. And how albedo gives coloration to metals. Of course, plastics and dielectrics also have a degree of tinting of their reflection. The fact that a plasticky thing like this is red, in this case red, on its front face isn't simply because of the diffuse. The reflection should also be picking up some of that tint. And this specular colour, reflection colour, or the specular reflective tinting, is also affected by the Fresnel effect. Now exactly how we go about tinting the reflection of any given material will vary from material to material. Some have a tint, some get us to input a specular colour. In this case, with standard, we've got a colour highlight. And what we will see is that due to the Fresnel effect, the parts of the surface that are facing us will pick up more tint, whilst the parts that are facing away will pick up less. This tinting is a little trickier to set up, and you can't do it, at least not directly with the Fresnel node here. You might, of course, presume that since it's more tinted at the facing and less tinted at the glancing, then that being the same pattern of behaviour that we see in the diffuse, that we can just take the you know, same thing that's driving that and use that to tint our highlight. And that works okay at a low IOR like this, but once you go up to metals, that should get even stronger. So it shouldn't just be the facing angle that is getting tinted with the colour, it should extend even further toward the glancing angle. And of course, by using the inverse, which is driving the diffuse, then as the IOR is going up, this tint is going down when in fact the tint should be spreading ever more. As such, a quick and easy way to do it is with a gradient, or rather a couple of gradients um, like this. So we might have here a simple gradient that sort of gives the highlighting that we might expect for a plastic. So we've got just three keys here. So we've got, you know, fairly strong tinting um, just on the front face, but that begins to drop off quite rapidly as we approach the grazing angle there. So perhaps this is something like, I don't know, perhaps like this. So we start to get quite a rapid fall off of the actual specular or reflection tinting. Then we can create another version of the gradient where we move this key up considerably higher like this. And that pushes the tinting far farther out towards the grazing angle there. Then you can get a third gradient have a couple of keys, one that's at 10, the other that's, say, at 1. Then, of course, for the low IOR, you can plug in the result of your low IOR tint gradient. For the high IOR, you can plug in the result of your high IOR gradient. Get some value that we'll use to become the IOR, and that can drive this as well as that gradient, and that can then drive the tinting, for example. Then, as we go to 1.5, IOR, we get a, you know, approximate sort of plastic look there. And of course, as you're getting up to the high IORs, you get a much more metallic look like this. We're driving the diffuse, we're driving the reflection, and we're driving the tinting of the reflection, all based on the Fresnel effect. And as you can see, because of the way that we're matching them all together, 
and we've got all of the energy conservation, we still wind up with a nice realistic surface, which is of course in accordance with the different looks that we might want to be creating. Of course, there's another place where the Fresnel effect comes into play, and that's in transparency. Light rays that hit the surface dead on are more likely to pass through a transparent surface, whereas those that hit it at a glazing angle are more likely to bounce off it. So in exactly the same way as diffuse is run by the inverse of whatever the Fresnel function is, then so does transparency get run that way if we are indeed doing a transparent surface. So here, even though of course the effect is only slight, we have more reflectivity at the glancing angle, but we have lower transparency. And thus, once again, we have Fresnel effect with energy conservation. There is also one other important note about the Fresnel effect, and that is in how it responds to the roughness of a surface. So here I'm just going to use the specular input, since that has roughness. And you'll see that as I turn the gloss down there, so as I'm getting a very rough, soft reflection, obviously nothing here is changing, but what should change is that the strength of the reflection from the glancing angle should begin to spread ever more into the facing angle. And so you could do something like that, perhaps like this, with again a gradient, so we'll take this to be gloss zero, so very rough, and gloss one, so very smooth. So when very smooth, we should be getting the regular Fresnel effect. And when gloss zero, then it should be spread more. So let's just say equal everywhere for say's sake. We could then have some other value that is going to be our gloss. So when gloss is high, we're getting a strong Fresnel effect. And as the glossiness gets lower or the roughness gets higher, then the Fresnel spreads ever more into the facing angle. Of course, again, it's easy to see why this is the case, as the roughness of a surface that makes it be glossy or shiny is really just micro faceting. It's teeny tiny little bumps on the surface that are, you know, too small to be seen. But of course, each of these bumps responds to light just the same way an entire object does. So even though you might only get, you know, reflection coming in from the edges there, at this bit of the surface that is facing us, you're still going to get an edge reflection off one of those little bumps. As such, as the roughness increases, the Fresnel effect becomes less strong and the reflectivity will spread further into the face of a surface. You will indeed notice that the main types of reflection, diffuse and specular, have a variety of effects that are associated with them and the angle of view. There are other attributes that take on Fresnel-like variation. So we see here that we have a curved wall and a series of lights that are all just an equal distance from their part of the wall. Yet when we render them reflective like this with a slight roughness, we notice that at the glancing angle we see a sharper reflection and at the facing angle we see a softer one. And this is common for all of Lightwave's material types. So many of the effects are included, but we don't need to worry about making sure that they are created ourselves. We might find differences in individual materials, how they actually render depending on their specular model, but incidents of view based effects like this are very commonly accounted for, helping to give us more realistic renders much more easily. Of course, different materials in Lightwave will handle this differently. Many of them have it built in. For instance, this material here. Without any specular, then we've got no specular. But otherwise, we always get a glancing angle Fresnel effect like this. The tint is up to us to control in this particular case to get more or less plasticky looks. And as you see, that applies to the front face, not the grazing angle. It will also, of course, handle the differences for metallic folders automatically, giving us the correct tint for the correct angle and, of course, the stronger reflections on the front. Whilst others will, of course, take care of the transparency and the reflectivity and make sure that those are properly balanced out and, of course, are observing Fresnel here. We can see very reflective on this glancing angle at the top there, but, of course, much more transparent on the facing angles. 
and whilst in other materials we'll encounter things that actually have a Fresnel setting here which allows you to balance out a built-in automatic Fresnel effect between more grazing angle Fresnel or indeed more front-facing and therefore sort of metal-like Fresnel here. And of course we'll see all of these materials in due course as we come to them in the training but for right now that is the Fresnel effect, what it means, how it works and some of the ways that you can go about creating it yourself or seeing its effects in materials that have it for us automatically.